bad happened. I'm okay. So I was fearful, like you said, that's how anxiety happens. You're fearful of the unknown. You're fearful of the future. And you're also fearful that you are not good enough for the next person. And it's the same thing, Tseko can agree with me. When you are in that depressive state, it's not about what your parent is not doing or, or doing. It's more about, am I good enough oh, yeah. to Validation. be a child? Yeah, and it just am compounds. I, yeah. Yes. Mm. Am mm. I a good child? My parent is... Do- my mother's doing so much, but what am I doing? Exactly. Yeah. My father's doing so well, what am I doing as a child? And it just adds to that. And we shouldn't feel that, but unfortunately we do. Welcome to Unmute with Nonshi, where we're discussing my son's book. Today is a totally different ball game. We're discussing mental decay, living with anxiety, ADD, OCD, and the devil that's called depression. So, I think before I even come to you, mm-hmm. I would love to ask the person that first read the manuscript. <laughs> I was scared to read the manuscript, let me tell you. I didn't read it. So I was just facilitating between you and Seho. Mm-hmm. So what came to you first time you received this manuscript? And by the way, sorry, I need to introduce yeah, okay. <laughs> my guest. I need to introduce my guest. It's Lauren Moy, who is our publisher. That's the author, Tsecho Fatso Sepula, mm-hmm. likes the name Diani. Yeah. <laughs> and that's my last born, Mkolisi Mabaso. And welcome. And we're here to discuss your book, Tsecho. I hope you're ready. I've got a few questions. I hope so too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few questions because you made me a staring in this book. <laughs> and as I'm, you know, I asked Lauren, how did you find the book, the manuscript, when I sent you for the first time? I remember sending you guys an email after I first went through it, and I said to you, it wasn't an easy read. I said to you, it was quite heavy. And the reason why I said that is because it deals with depression, anxiety, on a level that people can relate to, but only after they've healed. And I say this because I have lived through it myself. And I said to you in that email, I can relate to a lot of things. And I also said that um, if you are physically going through something like this right now, it's not a good, it's not a good read for you because it does trigger a lot in you. But what I can say is that it's a must read. Yeah. You know, a a lot of people relate to it. Mm. I also, okay, obviously I'm there. But, um, you know, I think what I like about it is Tsioho is dealing with things or he's talking about things that are in our everyday lives now, you know. Mental health is so rife, and I don't know how we got here. I really don't know. Mm. And it seems like our children are going through it more than us. When I say us, our time, my time, mm. we, oh, we were shy away to talk about it. And I found that a lot of people that called me after reading this book is either the child is going through that, mm. or the parent went through something that is there in the book. Mm. How did you heal? Because I hear you saying you went through that. Was it depression? Was it ODD, OCD? Was it ADD? What was it that you went through? So my main issues was depression and anxiety. And there's a section where he speaks about um, unaliving himself. 
and I can relate to that 100%. I have attempted that myself, and by the grace of God, I'm still here because mm. it's not my time. And reading that just reminded me of how far I've come. Because I have a story to tell, but I didn't. I'm not this brave. I yeah. didn't tell my story, but he did. And it was a good thing that he told it so raw. Because as you're going through it, you're reading the book, and he's basically taking you through his story step by step as it's unfolding. He never tells you what's coming next. <laughs> So you're reading it, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. Mm. Did not expect that. Hold on, I need a minute. Mm. <laughs> mm. And I literally have to go away and gather myself because even though his experience is completely different to mine, the depression is still the same. Mm. The anxiety is still the same. The OCD, I, I was a perfectionist, but it's only because I needed to protect myself. If I don't keep things together, then... If it goes out of bounds, I'm going to lose myself. And I didn't want to. So I had to, I, I, I cannot tell you every chapter I related. You know, when you say you are a perfectionist, I'm also one, I think you've already saw, I'm yeah. a perfectionist. And I said to Teoho, and I always say to them, when I feel like I don't have control, I feel like I'm losing my mind. Yes. When I don't have control over things, yes. it's where I lose my mind. And that's also part of mental health. Yes. Because you can't let go. You can't just be. Yeah, just let it be. And it's so, it's only to let it be, but it's not easy. Easier said than done. Yeah. You know, so I'll come back to you, Lauren. <coughs> how do you feel after writing, as Lauren said, how, you know, you just put yourself out there and I asked you, you said, everybody is going through this. Mm. But the difference is we you can just oh, willing to say it. Yeah, or at least willing to say it first. Um it wasn't my plan to to write this book actually. Yeah, I was supposed to write your life story, if you remember. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you the story. I know. <laughs> yeah, so I was supposed to write that, but as I was trying to, I, I kept getting stuck, not that it was writer's block necessarily. I just couldn't get that story out of me. Um, and this was the one that kept coming to, to my mind and to my heart. And it very much felt like I needed to close this chapter in my life in, in order to move on with my life generally. But even to, to move on as an author, the, there was this very specific story that it felt I had to tell first before I tell anything else, before I move on to any, any other story. So yeah. That's how I decided that I need to to tell the story about my life. It was something that I'd been holding in for a very long time. And even when I did eventually let it be known, it was to a small group of people. And I found that as I was making friendships and meeting other people, they were going through some really hectic things. And they found it um, reassuring that I, I would meet someone for the first time and be willing to be so open. So. I think that's something you instilled in me to, to be willing to be so open. I thought, why not? I've got this story. I have a willingness to be as open as I've been here. So I think we can do something. Yeah. Yeah. I was uh, actually because at our house, it's I'm the only lady. I've got three boys. Mm -hmm. So they're all introverts, sort of. And I was shocked that, you know, say Ho was like uh, talking like through the book. <laughs> Because I, they will always say, no, we don't like social media. I'm on social media. I'm, you know, I'm the one that's talkative. Police is also talkative, but he will never go on social media. And I'm like, okay, then they've got a bit of me <laughs> in there, you know. <laughs> a bit of me in there. So, Police, I'm going to come to you now. You, I think... After Lauren, you're the second person actually to read the book when we received the books. Yeah. You know, I had to gather myself first <laughs> because <laughs> of what Lauren said that you oh, I had to gather myself before I read the book. How did you find, because I still remember that Sunday we got the book on Saturday, Sunday you said you already finished chapter one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's hectic, hectic stuff, things that you never knew about your brother that you found out for the first time, how, what went through your mind? 
Um, I think the good thing is that I didn't have any expectations for it. Um, I don't, I don't know. I think maybe we are the people, us three, other, you know, me, Rilani, and you, are the people who would um, have expectations. But I think because I didn't have any expectations for it, I wasn't so surprised by anything in the book. So, I mean, it was definitely heavy. I think it's especially heavy when he talks about, like, you, you know, when he says my name or Rilani's name or your name. I think it becomes especially heavy. But I think, like Lauren was saying, it's it's very... You can, whether or not you can relate to everything, you can relate to the feeling, you know, of, of certain things. You can relate to the... the exp you can't relate to the experiences, but you can relate to the reactions and the what those experiences like do to you. So I think that was what I took away from the book. And yeah, I don't think much of it surprised me. I think it just made me love him more, I think. So I think yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, I still remember, Lauren, when I said to you, I read the book and you said you were worried about me. Mm -hmm. Who were you with, you know, when reading the book? And I said, I was alone. I was in the bedroom. I still remember. I would come now and then and look at them. And I would hold myself because I don't want to ask questions that, but, you know, it's like justifying yourself that, but maybe you didn't get me. I didn't mean to act this way, you know. I didn't, and hence, I didn't read the manuscript before. That makes sense. So I didn't <laughs> read at all. I was just literally, when he sent it to me, I was facilitating. And why I didn't read it, I didn't want to influence anything. I didn't want him to, you know, if he wanted to judge me, let him judge me. He had that right. If he wanted whatever. So I didn't influence anything in that book, you know. I was shocked also some of the things that, okay, <laughs> it's how he saw me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's how, you know, it felt a bit of a judgment. It felt, yeah, and I'm like, okay, that's life. Mm -hmm. And and you would have never known. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You, know that you never knew. I wouldn't. And I'm glad at the same time that I know how he felt, mm -hmm. but there was a feeling that I could have done things differently. But who am I? I like mean, all parents. <laughs> you know, I could have, I don't know, I could have been there for him more. How did you feel for me as a parent going to read that book? My heart broke. Especially me being Tiho's parent. Oh, my heart broke immediately. Like, I honestly, I. When you sent it to me, I assumed. I did not know I was the first person. You <laughs> like, were. <laughs> I just want to say out loud, I'm honored. <laughs> like, thank you so much. I'm so honored. I had no idea I was the first person. So when I sent my feedback, I assumed that, I read. that everyone read the book. And when you said to me, no, I uh, like, it's almost like I took you aback a little bit. And I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Then I prayed and I'm like, Lord, please be with her. <laughs> like when she does read the book, just just make her heart strong. Because yeah. I'm I'm not a parent, but I can tell you, putting myself in there, I love children. I have a very um, amazing relationship with all the children in my life. And if I have to put myself in a parent's position, my heart broke instantly for you. And it broke more because I knew you didn't know and you couldn't have known. It's the same thing with my dad. I told him mm -hmm. that I attempted. And on his birthday, <laughs> no less. <laughs> and um, it was towards the end of his birthday. So it's early hours of the morning. And he looked at me and he cried and he broke down so much. And he said, please don't leave me. And I'll never know. You see, I can cry. Mm -hmm. He said, I would have never known. Yeah, the... the, the you know, people don't understand. Seho's book, it's touching <laughs> so many things, you know. It's touching parents, you know. It's touching suicide. It's touching rejection. It's touching despair. 
it's touching so many things. And it's only seven chapters, so many things. And also how <laughs> our upbringing can, as a parent, my upbringing, my, how I, I want to put it in a way that, the trauma that I went through mm. as a parent, mm. you're not aware that it penetrates mm. to your children. Mm. It, it, it penetrates to your children differently. And I so wish as parents that we try to know our children more, not be judgmental, because I listen a lot to this guy, Gabo Mate. He's explaining so nicely what's anxiety. He says it's a feeling, you know, when you're fearful because you're trying to be in control, that fear. He explains also how people end up being doing drugs. So his book also touches on that. Mm. That we see a, a, an addict, but we don't question why, what made that person become that. Become that. Yeah. Did you get that? Yes. And, Lauren, <laughs> you know, um, how, how's your dad now? Did you uh, uh, did you forgive? Did you have any like resentment when you were trying to take your life away towards him? I'll come to Tseho. Did you have any resentment? Did you have you know that he should have done things differently? So I'm gonna say this boldly, and I think Tseho will agree with me. Um, had nothing to do with you as a parent. <laughs> yeah, I think I've said that to you. <laughs> so I didn't feel any resentment towards my dad. In fact, I felt sorry because he's the only one that I didn't want to hurt. I wanted to just make it stop. I was in pain, and I was in pain of a lot of different reasons, and my father was not one of them. I do feared you? more for him because he wouldn't be able to move forward from it but he, and I just, I felt like, maybe you can agree, I felt like it was unfair to him. So, <laughs> how did you feel? Because somewhere in the book, I felt, I felt, and maybe it's wrong, because you said in the <laughs> book, I made things like, it's about me, as Lauren is explaining now, that no, it's never about me, yeah. it's about you. So as a parent, maybe we're failing somewhere, and but I don't want to judge us because we're doing our best, especially single parents. Yeah, so that's why I understood because it's it's a very difficult position for you as as a parent. You you've done everything for me, especially as a single mother, and I've seen that, and you've done brilliantly. But here's your child, and he's still saying he's dissatisfied. You know. So it's hard for you as a parent, I think, to not look at yourself and think, what, what have I done wrong or what more can I do? Which is coming from a, a, a good place, but it's still making it about you. And at that point, it had nothing to do with you at all. It didn't matter what you were going to give me. It didn't matter what you could provide. I was just so very much unhappy. And it had nothing to do with you, with my brothers. It's just where I was. So you as a parent, yeah, there wasn't much you could have done, I think. I was telling you also it was hard for me to to expect you to help me because I didn't know how to help myself at that point. I didn't even know how to, if someone's drowning, they have to stick their hand up for you to grab it and pull them up. I didn't even know how to put my hand up for you to help me. I just had no idea what, what was going on. Yeah. Well, is there now, or at your age, is there any time where you felt so depressed or you related a bit to Tseho after reading the book. I know, I, 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 let me not say I know. I felt this year, Ellie, that you were sort of going into depression. 
And I used to ask you many a times, are you okay? Are you okay? Until I realized that because I was not in a good space and it was affecting you so much because I could see when I started being positive, started being okay, alive, and you changed. Even your attitude, it was the totally that I know. Can you just elaborate on that? Um, yeah, I think you're right. I think at school, I'm like, the the mood's more consistent, if that makes sense, because people aren't real, if that makes sense. Like, <laughs> not to say that they're fake at school, but at school, you're not going to cry about your own problems. At school, you're not going to talk about the issues that's going on at home. So it's more consistent, so it's easier to be happy then. I'm very, like, um, perceptive to the energy around me. So then I think if I come home and it's like not good because I think really what gives me the most joy is like coming home and then seeing one of you guys at the door smiling I think it's stuff like that that really gives me joy so if I do come home and then it's it's not a good energy I think it affects me even unconsciously like even if I'm not it's not an intentional thing but I think it definitely affects me but I, I don't think I was near, really in a depressive state or going near it I don't think I don't think it was ever that bad but I could see that it was affecting you and I had to make you know Lauren a conscious decision that no because he's a very jolly person so who can attest to that when he comes in you know he's always in the same mood say hi ma hi sometimes they'll hug and you know and it's how our environment is but you know when I listen to Cabo Mate saying that <laughs> your your parents, they, you, as a parent, you affect your children. It and is. Can I touch on <laughs> that? Yeah. Please. So seeing what you're saying about Koli, his mood kind of uh, acclimating to yours, it, it made me a bit scared because I felt deeply like that when I was growing up. When you were unhappy and I'd see you struggling or suffering, I felt like I had no right to be happy at all. And it, it became so deep that it... At some point, I, I didn't look to my own emotions. I'd rather wait to see if you're happy or not. Then I can tell what I'm supposed to be today. Am I going to be happy or are we sad today? It's very much a we thing. So especially as a, as a single mother, your your life has been quite tumultuous in trying to, to you know, raise three boys. And we've seen you go through a lot of stuff. So growing up, it was very tough for me to see that. And I I became symbiotic with you. I think in an in unhealthy way. I remember when you were trying to get a divorce from from uh, <laughs> from <laughs> his dad, yeah. <laughs> but one of those moments was when there's these very vivid moments in my life that like something changed there. And one of those moments when you were telling your parents that I can't be with this guy anymore, and you you were crying quite deeply, and your mother, my grandmother, was saying, you know, you can't get a divorce; doesn't look right. But seeing you cry there and struggling like that, I immediately got up and I walked to the bathroom. Remember, I locked the door and I sat behind the door and I started crying those same tears. And that was just after matric. And I know in that moment, something fundamentally changed in my life. It, it kind of triggered all of these other things. Then, yeah, I remembered what had happened to me when I was young. The sadness came on, the, the anxiety doubled down. So, yeah, it, it really is... Uh, it's, it's a scary thing how parents can affect children without noticing, without wanting to, and how children can be affected without quite noticing themselves, actually, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. Can I touch on that? Please, Lauren. <laughs> okay. um, yeah. um, I like what Sefo said because even though as parents, you try, and I'm going to say we, um, because even though I'm not a parent, I still have parented a lot of people in my life. Mm. We try to do the best that we can with what we've got. And when he said, it's a good thing that things played out the way that he did. Because when he had the moment just after matric and everything kind of, it was his pivotal moment in his life if that didn't happen if he didn't see that with you if he didn't share that moment with you because from wh what I've read what I know from him he's a very um, empathic person 
And if he didn't experience that, then he wouldn't have gotten to the root cause mm. of his pain. Mm. So because he, yes, it happened the way it happened, but when it happened, you were in a better place to handle it. So when he went through all his um, after school, then it was university, university. Uni but you kept pushing him. You kept believing it. You showed up every single time. If he had to have that moment of breaking down in primary school, you might not have been okay enough to handle that. So everything happens for you. So don't, as a parent, don't blame yourself and say, I could have done more. It had to happen the way that it did happen. Because you needed to be okay to handle what's coming next. Yeah. He needed you to be okay because he didn't know what was coming next. You didn't know, but it needed to happen at that specific time. And it happened so beautifully to a point where he has such a powerful story. Mm -hmm. Such a powerful story. And he's so young. He's not telling his story at the age of 50. Yeah. He's telling his story now. And everybody is talking about the same thing, but nobody has the strength to actually talk about it and love it at the same time. I can talk about it as a victim, but he's not talking about it as a victim. He's talking about it as this is my life, or shall I say this is my past, but it doesn't define me. Do you want to add on that? It's yeah, a, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm hard on myself, yes. and I need to just stop saying I should, I should have, I should have. Number one, it's not about me, as you explained. It's not about me, and as Lauren explains, that it had to happen. Maybe the timing, I wouldn't have handled it yes. by the time. You know, because, Lauren, if you don't know, also I had suicidal thoughts. Interesting. But I never actioned on them. Yeah. So, who knows? They, you know, my kids, the whole world, they stand still. Like, I'll do anything for them. I think they know that about me. So, when I was going through... Last year, I was just going through a, a lot, a lot. And there was a time when, you know, when you have given up, you know mm -hmm. that I, I won't make it. Mm. And there's something I want to read about the firstborns. <laughs> Yesterday, I played a bit yeah. <laughs> for them that the firstborn is the one that goes through all the growing pain with you, yes. seeing the stages, all the stages of parenting with you. And you know, they holding my hand, say, oh, you've been there for me. And not that Nkulisi was not there. And Nkulisi said also, yeah, you've been there for me. All the divorce, the divorce court, you went with me. The court for, what is it? What is for, the, um, for, for granny. Yeah, yeah, you were with me, like <laughs> always. And last year, there was the one time, I'll never forget. And I said to you know, I reminded say, oh, I walked through the park and I've given up. I came back, Lauren. In my head, I was like, I'm going to bath. I'm going to wear my nice pajamas. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to drink pills and sleep. So uh, I wanted people when I'm gone, they must, I must be beautiful. Like my yeah. kids mustn't worry that we need to. Yeah. But that day I came to the house. I broke down. I think I had episodes. Mm. That was one. I broke down in my bedroom. Seho was there. And I could see he wants to help, but he doesn't know what to do. Mm. So one thing about me, I cry when it's heavy. It's how I think. It, it, yeah, I'm where I am. I cry. I cried so much on the floor in my bedroom. And so I said, Mom, it's going to be okay. I didn't have hope. Mm -hmm. You know what made me that, no, I'm not going to do this. I won't commit suicide. I took their pictures. I took their three pictures, Rulani, Tseho, and Kolis. With smiles, I put them next to my bed. I looked at them and I'm like, okay, if you can't handle this thing live, yeah. how do you expect them to survive? By the way, 
No family supported you. You've got only literally these three boys. So after you gone, who's, what's going to happen with them? So I had to have a conversation with myself, but I can't. So I had to put it next to the Bible and look at them and their smiles. And I'm like, I can't do this to them. I really can't do this to them. Mm. You know, touching on suicide. <laughs> Yeah, there's also another time when I think when you were there, I came from work. They retrenched me last year. I looked at them. I couldn't hold myself. I sat down, but we already discussed it. I cried so much, Lord. Mm. You know, it's where I experienced anxiety. When you talk about anxiety, <laughs> guys, people don't know anxiety is real. How did how did you experience anxiety, Lauren? I'll come to you too, and Goli, if you you did. How have you? Because I want people to ex, to understand. We 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 throw these terms really out there. Mental illness. We throw them like it's nothing. It's serious. Anxiety. It's serious, guys. Yeah. So with my experience, firstly, I just like to say anxiety is experienced or felt differently. From person to person. Some people might experience excessive headaches. Some people might experience sleeplessness, anger. My anxiety was in my stomach. It was in my gut. And I think it was linked more with... So I couldn't eat anything. I couldn't keep anything down. If I did eat, I was... I got full really quickly. And anybody who knows me, I eat a lot. <laughs> and I got full very quickly and I couldn't keep it in. And I think it was more linked to the fact that Food for me is, it's not a reward or it's not a must or whatever. Food for me is, it makes me feel good. So if I'm not feeling good, I can't eat. And my anxiety happened because it's a control thing. Mm. So I, and also my environment, funny enough, and not at home. Mine in particular was, um, I was in a bad relationship, first of all. And I had a terrible working environment. It was toxic. Toxic on all <laughs> ends. And my anxiety came about because I needed to survive. Mine was, okay, I need, I need to be on my best. I need to be the best ver version of myself. I, I don't even know what that is at this point. Mm -hmm. But I need to wake up and I have to be on. I have to be on continuously. And I have to do everything quickly to the best of my ability. And people need to accept me the way that I am because if they don't, then I'm going to fail. And oh my goodness. No. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you can't breathe. And you're hyperventilating and you feel like, okay, I'm going to have a panic attack. I'm having a panic attack. I can't do this. I can't do this. And that just, it doesn't go away. That's a sad part about anxiety. It just manifests into something so much more. And you end up sticking with it forever. How I did get rid of my anxiety is I had a friend that told me, you got to take the one thing that you can remove out of your life that's causing anxiety and start there. And I'll give you a simple example um, WhatsApp had the blue ticks and it shows that you have received the message. I used to get such deep anxiety because if I'm sending a message and somebody read it and it's blue tick and, and, and they, they, they don't respond. reply, they I'm like, you. why are they doing that to yeah, me? What's like, wrong? oh my God, like, what did I say? <laughs> did I say something wrong? Do yeah. I have to say it again? Like, what? Like, hi, how are you? And it was, and it's not with people that's, I mean, in a relationship. It's like with friends and family, mm. people I trust, people I know that's not going to hurt me, but I had anxiety. And my friend said to me, Turn it off. And I'm like, I can't do that. Turn it off. Give them the anxiety. Turn it off. And I kid you not, I did that in such a simple act. I did that. And for two days, I battled because you can't see when they really? read your message. You can't see who viewed your status. And I battled. And I was like, don't go back. Don't change it back. Don't change. You can get through this. You can get through this. Nobody died. You're okay. I had to continuously tell myself that it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, until I got past the second day. And I was like, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Nothing bad happened. I'm okay. So I was fearful, like you said, that's how anxiety happens. You're fearful of the unknown. You're fearful of the future. And you're also fearful that you are not good enough for the next person. And it's the same thing, I, Seiko can agree with me, when you are in that depressive state, it's not about what your parent is not doing or, or doing. It's more about 
am I good enough oh, yeah. to Validation. be a child? Yeah, and it just am compounds. I, yeah. Yes. Mm. Am mm. I a good child? My parent is... Do- my mother's doing so much, but what am I doing? Exactly. Yeah. My father's doing so well, what am I doing as a child? And it just adds to that. And we shouldn't feel that, but unfortunately we do. And how do we get out of that? You you it's positive mm. um, affirmation. affirmation. You have to start there. Like when people say you gotta learn to love yourself, they don't tell you how. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they <laughs> don't tell you how. Like look at yourself in the mind. No, sir. Like I there's more going on. Like they don't tell you how. But once you start understanding this is the anxiety, this is what's causing depression, and you kind of eliminate it from your life, then you can start to see in the cracks your worth. That's true because we like judging and saying, why don't you do this? Why do? And yeah. we're judging with our circumstances, but you're not in my shoes. You're not. 100%. You know, it's a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anxiety. I think, yeah, for me, like you say, anxiety has physical manifestations for about eight years. I had a constant mild headache and my chest felt like it was split in two. It was always just a tear in my chest. And I think um, for me, it was definitely from wanting a sense of control. And I think from when I was younger, I felt unsafe for some reason. I remember when my mother would go out and I put this in the book when she'd be out with friends or whatever, I'd I'd really get panic attacks, just praying over and over again, God, please bring my mom back home safe. Please bring my mom. And I'd do that for maybe 30 minutes and I'm gasping for breath. And um, I think, yeah, it was a young boy who was feeling unsafe who really just wanted someone to protect him. And then as I got older, it became uh, from wanting a sense of control around my environment. Um, I also put in the book that I'd stay up for hours the night before planning the next day, like down from when I woke up to when I went to bed. It has to go exactly like this. It's likely to go like that. I'm going to be with these friends. This is what they might say. This is what we might eat. I'd sit in my bed and I'd plan everything out. Only then that I feel comfortable enough to to get out of bed the next morning and feel like I, I wouldn't be under attack or I wouldn't disappoint someone. So it is either me disappointing or me being attacked. Yeah, those are the two things I was most afraid of. When yeah, isn't yeah. it because of uh, I was the only person that you can trust? I was the only person. That's another I thing. I think so too. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. that is why I think you felt. Like, your God, bring my mom back safe. Because without your mother, you felt like, as, you know, your <laughs> yeah, dad. I mean, the, <laughs> it uh, was abandonment, yeah. yeah. yeah and know? then the people that were around, the cousins and stuff, were a bit wild. So yes, it was, yeah, yes. it was a dramatic environment. Mm-hmm. It was never, yeah. And as I got older, especially now, the two things I want most is peace and stability. Mm-hmm. Because it was always moving pieces. There was always something happening. It was always an episode, you know. And, yeah, that that... For a child to grow up like that is, is scary. When I think back to my, my childhood years, I can barely remember them. I feel like was I just sitting in a corner yeah. trying to stay out the way, <laughs> just being quiet. Just yeah. Existing. Yeah. <laughs> but when it's uh, dramatic like that, you do, you want to just kind of remove yourself from it and, and not cause any trouble. That's why you grew up being anxious because you, you don't want to cause any trouble. There's already so much happening. I don't want to add to this, you know. Mm. Except the time that you were around, <laughs> you were at Glenstensia, I think. Uh, I came, you were late to come to the car or something mm. like that. And I promise it was my first time seeing what anxiety does. He couldn't breathe. Yeah. He was so scared that he's in so much trouble with me that he's late. And he couldn't breathe. He was crying. He was shaking. And I'm like, calm down. I'm down. I, I also became scared because I'm very time conscious. So <laughs> everybody that knows me that they are mess up with my time, I yeah. go like crazy. <laughs> I'm very time mm-hmm. conscious. Except that when did you have anxiety that you have experienced anxiety? Um well that was definitely the worst. Yeah. Uh, that was crazy. Yeah, no, it was. Um but I think there was a period in grade nine where I missed the first month of school, something like that. And I remember when I was going or when it was coming near to the time, we use teams at school. So when I was going near to the time, like the the site Mm -hmm. of like the team's icon was like, I don't know, even now it's like. I was just seeing it. Yeah. 
just seeing it, opening the app and like seeing the thinking I have to catch up with this. And it wasn't even like to to blame anyone, but it was like this feeling like it's, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, it was it's so crazy. funny that you're saying it, that and that something that for someone can say, no, it's just teams, but mm. because it had yeah. that mm. impact mm. on you, and you, when you see it, I think, mm. you know, it makes you anxious that, oh. uh-uh. Yeah. You know, I know that when people say to me, I was saying to, so I spoke to somebody yesterday, last night, I'll have this person maybe next week because he relates so much to the whole story. But he made me aware that, you know what, I relate so much to the whole story, but the whole was privileged. Mm. I was not. Mm. You know, that's another angle mm. that he was mm. privileged, but I was not. But I walked. So he was trying to say mental health doesn't choose. Mm. Doesn't, doesn't have color. It, it, doesn't. <laughs> it, doesn't. it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't, you know. Mm. So what makes me, and I don't want to say, and I, I know that I'm still healing and that when a person is like gossiping their friends, I can't handle. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't handle wholeheartedly. For me, it's like, okay, when you gossip about a person that you say is your friend, what are you saying about me? Mm. And also, I can't handle toxic people. I, I cut them. <laughs> It really makes me anxious. I, I, mean. I promise you, it makes me so anxious that I used to cry. And I'm, mm. So I'm in the point now where, I promise you, Lauren, as my children, they said I've grown so much. Yeah. My faith has grown that I can let go of a person. Oh, I can say, I cut. Yeah. I really, I cut. Yeah. And I feel good about it. I'll cut and feel guilty. No, I can't feel good. Yes. Mm. <laughs> I can't feel good. I'm yes. okay. <laughs> and people will say, yeah, but if it means you haven't forgiven. No. Mm -mm. To forgive doesn't mean I must have a relationship yeah, with you, you that person. Stay. Yeah. Uh -uh. I forgive. I, I can't. move on. <laughs> I let go. I move on. Yes. And I forget about you. <laughs> I, I promise you. And they know the other character with me. When you're not in my space, I know nothing about you. Yes. I don't even know where their dads are breathing or what. I yeah. promise you. <laughs> I had to, when I wanted their numbers, I had to trace. Wow. I, I, I cut you like that. Mm. And, <laughs> you know, now we're coming to the dad story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, dad story. Mm. So it's a shame that how men don't see the impact they're doing mm, yes. by rejecting or leaving their children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, reading this book, I didn't know. Some of the things I forgot about it. Mm. When Sir said, we went and he didn't come up, you yeah. know, from the flat. I forgot mm. because mm. for me it was not about... Mm, but, they, but for me, at that point, I'm excited, you know, my <laughs> father's about to come down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh. And, you know, the funny story is they bleed on their children. Mm -hmm. They hate the mother so much that they punish their children. Mm. I don't, I don't get it, guys. Man, I don't get it. That it's got nothing to do with the mother. Mm. And, you know... <laughs> For Tseho, you know, I'm saying your story, I'm now the book, to go as far behind my back and saying, "Hi, right, guy, let's meet. Mm. Tell me what's your story. And don't tell me, you know, it's got nothing to do with your relationship with my mom. Yes. And still, listen to the story, what he said to Tseho. I, I still battle with the <laughs> answer. That people, I, I don't work under pressure. As if you're yeah. talking about an object, what exactly did he say? No, he said, you know, people have been uh, telling me throughout the years that, you know, uh, you should have a relationship with your son. And then he says, um, but I'm not someone who, who succumbs to pressure. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't. And I just trusted that, you know, God would, would one day bring us back together. But 
It's such a, <laughs> it's a strange answer. <laughs> I think personally, I think it's so unfair that the children have to take on that responsibility. It is. So it's to like reach you, out to the parent. you, yeah, you bring this person to, to the world and then you give them this huge heavy bag and you say, you need to deal with this. Run with I'm it. going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they go on. And as, as a child, you have no, no choice but to deal with it because it, exactly. it's, it's what been laid you on you. It's going to hinder your life. You need to now work through something that you had nothing to do with, that you hadn't foreseen or planned. It's just dropped on your lap and do, yeah. And remember, you, you said it's not a matter of he doesn't know how to bring up kids. Oh, yeah. That only <laughs> dawned on me later <laughs> on in later? life, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> when I found, yeah, he's living with two kids and, and a wife. So yes. it's like, it's yeah. it's... It would be one thing, or it would still be bad, but it's one thing if a man is just not built to take care of kids. He doesn't want any of his and kids. That's, he's and a that's lone really ranger. So alive. Yeah, no, he's raising <laughs> two kids. Yes. So then it's like, okay, you don't want to be my father specifically. So there's something wrong yeah, with Yeah, with me, exactly. Yeah. And even though it's not verbalized in that way as I was growing up, but subconsciously, mm -hmm. definitely that's what's happening. Yeah, mm -hmm. my, my sense of worth is attached to that, mm -hmm. that he doesn't want me specifically. Yeah. And because of me. Because there was one time he says, yeah, oh, he sent me a WhatsApp what I did. And I'm like, but now I'm saying it's it got anything. nothing. And I didn't do anything <laughs> yes. because actually you cheated to a point where I got tired and said, I oh, man, let me, but let me, it go. It doesn't but even matter. It doesn't yeah. matter who did what yeah. in this case. It even was not about us. Even if you were a terrible person as my mother is your child not worth fighting for, no I matter who's see. standing in front of you? Even if you were resistant, if you were saying, yeah. don't see him, isn't a father going to fight still to, to yeah. see and be with his child regardless? Uh. And I mean, I, I think it's, I think it's an, ex, it's an ex, sorry, I think it is an excuse when he says that he <laughs> doesn't know how to be a dad. No one knows how to be a parent. Mm. When the child comes, that's when you figure it out. Yeah. I mean, my dad is still my parent. But he's, no, he's he, still parenting. He's not, he hasn't stopped. <laughs> he he doesn't even it. know. He's like, I'm going to be a parent until until I die. I'm like, even then beyond the grave, he's going to still parent me. <laughs> like that's, that's. But yeah. Lauren, the funny you thing. learn on the, on the job. Mm. But, I mean. <laughs> yeah. He never even said, I can't. No, he just said, I'm not working good under prayer. Like no. people are pressurizing <laughs> <Yeah>. me. <laughs> And, <laughs> uh, you're like because um, do they have a gun to your head? Woo! <laughs> he doesn't like so it means you're resisting, you're punishing yes. this boy because people are putting pressure on you. That yes, and he looks like him. <laughs> yeah. You know, because one time we went to our reunion, varsity reunion. I went with Seho, and funny enough, they said, ah. Hey, he looks like he's dead. Yeah. He was just sitting where he's sitting. Yeah, but that's what I kept so hearing made, throughout, yeah, throughout the years the growing evening. up. He yeah. looks so much like, like him. him. Yeah. So it's for me, he's where is he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't help. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And it's where I'm like, when so says, there was one time he said to me, yes, see the choices that you make <laughs> in man. <laughs> there is somewhere in the yeah, book. It says, yes, yeah. see the choices that you make in man. Yes, I'll say like from, from a child's perspective, there was... At a certain point, I was angry with you, and I could see we were fighting a lot. I was angry, but maybe not necessarily at you, but you are the, the only person who was there. So all that anger and frustration that I had, especially as a firstborn, there were certain things that I, certain freedoms maybe that my friends had, they could go out, you know, and go out for days or whatever, or just, but I, I needed to come back. I needed to, you know, be with my mother or with my brothers. There were just certain things that, I felt like I, I was thinking differently as a child because I'm, I'm a firstborn. And at a certain stage, I got really angry about that. And my father's not there to be angry at. So all of those emotions are coming to you, unfortunately. You're the one who stuck around. It's the default. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. And then history repeats itself. Police <laughs> 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 is dead. So I got married to him. A funny. <laughs> You know, I know, guys, people are really, really, they can put on a mask. Oh, of course. People mm. put on a mask so much. He was this <laughs> yeah. present father. Like, we yeah. were all, after the divorce, even so said, what just happened to this guy? <laughs> like, went AWOL. Oh, my goodness. And I'm like, what just happened? And he was like a present father. 
So what it came to me is, okay, he knows I, this one, she's a single mother. She knows how to do this thing. I can leave him. <laughs> she leave her. Do it again. Yeah, she does. <laughs> it's like, no. I can I leave her. I don't want to do it alone. <laughs> I don't. And I don't. why are people making co-parenting as if it's a nightmare? I, 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 you know... <laughs> It's the right way. It's the right way. That's what it is. And it's the right way. I think way. they've got this illusion, this man, that I still want them. I don't. Mm. No, seriously, I, mm. I really, even my children knows, I don't. They're trying to even say, can we get you a boyfriend? Because I'm very talkative. I'm, I don't want them. Mm. And Goli knows, I never lied, that mm. I got married, but I didn't want to get married. Mm. Yeah. But a blessing came from that marriage. This guy... As you know, they said, this guy, everybody that knows me, I'm, I'm honest. So I think everybody that knows us, they know good mm. since he was born. Because he's so talented. I remember, and good not to, uh, you know, I, I will ask you now, if he's watching this guy. <laughs> Funny enough, I had to, I left, I, I, we divorced 2013. Never saw him. I'm that kind of a person. Mm. I cut, I like, but I never even once said, don't come and see your child. Mm. Never. Mm. I don't do that. Mm. I don't. Then the next thing, I feel like the pinch financially. Mm. And it says something that if Nontlandla ask you for financial help and they never asked you, even Tsiho's dad, mm. never asked you for almost 30 years, if I ask, it means no, no, no. It's genius. This woman, yeah, she 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 needs money. Yeah. <laughs> For him, a joke was, last time I asked, he said, I, I'm at the funeral. <laughs> Somebody, a, a family member passed on, and they needed money. They suffer suffering. I'm like. I need the money. I also, I'm, I'm like... I'm alive. And, and yeah. your child. That's your child is struggling. Your child. And I'm like, okay, no problem. I said to say, oh, you know what? That was the last time reaching out. I will never, ever in my life. I'll come to this part that the men like coming when they see that they go, they're about to die or something. They'll come with one word, sorry. Oh my you know. Gosh. And then we must just forgive. Yeah. Hmm. So how did you feel? Because I reached out to his dad. Mm. You know, sometimes I, I don't even want to use this word. He came boasting last year. The way he's making money. Look, I look, he was boastful that he's expecting money from building and he's looking after his wife, new wife's mm. children, putting them at first. And I'm like, okay. But I'm, I, you know, says, I'll see what to do. Gone. Mm. So he came to break that, yeah. Wow. I sent him a message asking that, please, help. You know, he says, what? It serves you right, what you did to me. I'm like, I divorced because I, <laughs> you, you were doing, you were a liar, you were, you yes. know. I, 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 I divorced, I had the reason <laughs> to divorce. <laughs> <laughs> so last month, or no, about three months ago, he came with some lame excuse that I don't want him to see. So I said, ah. Mm -mm. He thought, I said, ah. So he came back from school. I said, this guy says he wants to see you. I'm very, I speak to my children and they know me. So he says, okay, yeah, uh, uh, make an appointment. We called, mm. never responded. Wow. Never, even till today, wow. never responded. I sent a message that, ah, you know what? When I was calling you, I was with Tully, actually. He said, no, you can come. You can fetch him and you go to the Grove. So why bother if you're not going to... He, it was an excuse. He doesn't want to support. But then why bother even communicating, reaching yeah. out? No, I'm the one who's, who's reaching yes, out. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So he doesn't want to support, but... But come and see your child he, anyway. Exactly. It's the problem with them. Yeah. That, um... But I'm still going to... Uh, he is going to support. You know, my last words with him, I said, it's sad that he is so talented. I said, hey, he is. Mm. Now he's going to get colors for Kuro next year mm. in Metric. I said, mm. you are going to regret it. Even with Seo, I always say, yeah. I've got, you know, and it's a blessing for me that even if I'm a single mother, 
but God has blessed me with talented children. Mm. The book is written very, very mm. good. Very, I am, I, am I like? I can agree. <laughs> you can put it down. Mm -mm. Even if it's really heavy, but you it can't. You there. Exactly. You want to know if it's going to get better. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so like, exactly. Come on, come on, give me something. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yes. And it's a shame that men, pun they think they're punishing women. Oh, Meanwhile, they're punishing their children. Yes. And once a child gets to a stage that it's okay, yeah. And they understand. I'm at that stage now. I mean, now any relationship with him is just like making an old friend. You know? what, what's, yeah. what's the point in it? I don't see us sitting and watching a soccer game. It's, it's, it's done. I don't want to be friends with him. He's lost the right to father me. So yeah. there is no point of connection there at this point. And on, and on that, because it's so powerful what you're saying, um, because most children don't get to this point. But I think, the re and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the reason why you are here is because you've realized that who your father was and wasn't isn't a reflection on you. Exactly. You mm -hmm. still chose who you want to be. It's no, still exactly your choice. that. Exactly that. Um, and that's why I, I chose to meet up with him when I didn't tell you <laughs> yet, not the same time. <laughs> it was because I, I felt I was coming to a point in my life where I had to decide very much what kind of a man I want to be, what kind of a father I want to be. And I recognize I do want to have children. So, you know, I need to look this man in the eye and see what I'm not and uh, what I could have been and put that to bed. Yeah, because I'm, I'm looking to move on now. That's really powerful. And you, Tony, how do you feel? <laughs> it's actually interesting. I was thinking this morning while I was showering, I was like, how can I find an al analogy to like describe how it's like? And I was thinking, it's like if you weren't born with an arm, <laughs> you grow up learning how to use one arm, you become good with one arm, but everyone else has two arms. <laughs> What's hurting you isn't the last arm. It's not your dad. It's that everyone else has something. It doesn't mean that you're missing something emotionally. You don't miss the lost arm, but the what hurts is the feeling of everyone else having two arms. So it's like, I don't miss my father. I don't need a relationship with my father. I've, I'm full. I'm a full human being now without my father. What hurts is that everyone else is also a full person with a father. <laughs> like then you make it question, makes you question, Am I, yeah. am I my like fully myself? Could can I, get I fully, fuller, yeah? Can yeah. I get yeah. more <laughs> I without my yeah? yeah? But then you know, I I have a loving family, so I think yeah. I have more loving or more of a loving family than a lot of people. So I think that's what helps is that I know I'm I'm full, mm. I'm as full as I can get. So that's I think the best yeah. analogy I can give to how it feels. But when he with that thing where he was like, where he didn't respond. I think also, again, if I didn't expect him to want to see me, I don't need him to see me, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. You know the sad part, and we're playing with God, that he says he's got a church somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> where, how, how do you, it's where I don't get it, that you stand, you preach, but you don't do what you're preaching about. Uh, how do you really because to love you don't have to love it needs to come natural and I promise you this guy it was like he is loving and we were so he happy was. he was so doting yeah. on him it, it was amazing like, to see in the early yeah. years yeah you know and I said to I said, hey, maybe it's a blessing in disguise. You would have been so spoiled. You wouldn't be so independent. <laughs> <laughs> because he used to spoil him. Yeah, but it's, it's only for how many years, actually? Six. Six, six years <laughs> of his life. But it's still impactful. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But after Mkwelisi changed and became independent, became grown so much, and I'm like, hey, maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Mm. You know, but it's not what I wished for my children. Mm. You know, I wish that their fathers could have played loving part, could have been there for them. I must say to you as, as a mother and maybe to encourage other parents that you've always been quite open with us mm. about our fathers and the misgivings and even the, the good parts. You've been open objectively about them and that's been really good. I think that's helped us 
um, deal with the situation, look at it for what it is, and yeah, even now we make jokes about <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, so <laughs> it's do not worry. yeah, it's not <laughs> this very sensitive spot that we can't touch. I think if it was like that, it would build it up and it would have a lot more power over us. I mm. don't believe that they have that much power over us now because we've been so open and frank about it. Yeah, and so thank you for that. Because you didn't have to um, fill in the blanks. Exactly, mm. exactly, knew, yeah. It, it wasn't a mystery, yeah. Yes, you knew exactly, you could ask <laughs> the question, and it was answered, and that was it. You didn't yeah. have to fill in the blanks. So, mm. yeah, I'd encourage parents to do that. See, you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. And I think the other thing, it's anger, yeah. letting go. I said to them, you know what, I've forgiven. And if they think I haven't, I have forgiven. As I say, I don't want them anymore. I just wanted them in my mm. children's lives, mm. you know. Mm. And But it's, it's what it is. And one thing I know, we love one another. Lauren, yeah. I know mm. we can eat um, maybe <laughs> bread only or sleep with us, but we'll still be together, yes. unity, yes. you know. And yeah, it's unfortunate that it touched, you know, a depression. And I know, so you're working on it every day. Yeah. And um, you're willing to share your story. And thank you to the companies that, you know, they've called you to do the seminar, to share your story. It's a big thing, Lauren. Mm -hmm. It's it's really, I'm so glad. Bec <laughs> it, 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 it go, you out of your comfort zone. You, you if some of the people, they say it's taboo, but for me, to talk about what happened to you, you help other, you know, other people, mm -hmm. and we haven't touched much. We don't have much <laughs> time, a, but a few <laughs> more parts. I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we still yeah. we will come next yeah. week, you know, to talk about also the sexual. Oh yeah, that's a big one. I that's a big one. Yeah. Um, how men, other men, groom men, boys, oh. big, boys are sexually harassed, guys, mm -hmm. molested. Mm -hmm. Read the book. And you see how they get away with it. Mm. But we'll have the next uh, episode. We'll dwell on it and get mm. someone. If you want to come and participate, you know, if Seho's book has touched you somehow, you relate, please give me a call on 76 182 and we'll have you on unmute. And we discuss mm. the things that we feel they are taboo. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Thank you, Tseho. Thank you, Thank you Goli. Thank you. And yeah, thank you. <laughs>